guys, it's Laurie of Laurie's Heirloom Sewing. And if you haven't guessed, I'm working on the red work. So, as you probably have seen, apple butter and sweet tea are done. This one, the parts that I've not done, I'm going to rewrite. So I have the B for biscuits, I have the word salt, the word butter, and then the whole three-quarter cup milk. The reason I'm going to write them is that they're not, for some reason or other, I fell off of my plan in the way that I was going to write them. And this is too big. The B is kind of wonky. Salt is too high. Butter is too far. So fortunately, all I have to do is hit this with the iron. It will erase those elements and I'll be able to just redo them, hopefully, the way I want them done. So this is what we currently have. And I'll show you what it looks like when I come back. So if you've never heard of Friction Pen ink or heat erase, they're made by Pilot and this is what they look like. I ordered a pack of three off of Amazon a while back. I honestly have no clue how much. Um, I just know that if you, I think you can even get these in stores, like at Walmart. Um, I would be willing to bet that hobby stores or even craft stores like Joanne or Michaels or even Hobby Lobby would have a heat erase pen. Maybe not this brand, but um, as long as you can write on fabric, and then um, erase it with heat, you should be good. They're not, I don't ever carry this to any other part of the house because if you write something, like if you sign a check and the check gets hot, you leave it out in your purse in a car um, on a hot day, <laughs> homework has been known to vanish. So uh, they stay in my sewing room. I, I wouldn't put them out in the rest of the pin population in my house. Knowing my luck, it'd be, you know, this is my one chance to give you my phone number. <laughs> I, I write it down and then set something hot on it. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to redo the B for biscuits. I'm going to rewrite the word salt and then um, six tablespoons of cold butter will go here and then three-fourths cup of milk or three-fourths cup milk will go here in hopefully in a line with the the font just kind of went all over the place on biscuits but I'm okay with that it doesn't bother me at all I do want to kind of replicate the B for butter on apple butter And it's been, you know, forever since I wrote that. All right. Much happier with the way it looks now it's I mean it's hand-drawn so it's not going to be perfect and that's fine with me if you know me well you know that that is basically what I live by so there's the B for biscuits and then I have redone salt butter and three-fourths cup milk okay so I'll be doing the embroidery I'll finish this up and then what I need to decide is a line up first. Just 
just to kind of give us an idea. All right, so after biscuits, I'm going to have apple butter, like so, with a space. And then apple butter, I'm going after apple butter, I'm going to have sweet tea, like I'm going to end up making apple butter a little wider just to kind of fit in a little bit better and then I've got some of that green floating around there okay so this is the basic idea with the table runner so my plan is to, to take you know to trim these so that they're all basically the same size and then um, one width of this would be for the table runner and then I'll also use this for the backing this plaid will be for the backing and in between the two I will have the warm and natural so I'll have this this quilted uh, table runner these will be uh, pieced together so I'll have a strip and then this and then a strip this and this will fit on the other side you know etc etc all the way down so that is going to be that table runner as we know it I'm quite pleased I love the way this plaid looks it's so it has my cheery favorite little raspberry pink but it also has kind of a fall vibe um, I don't know if it's the gold which I normally am not drawn to gold I am definitely a silver person, but this, I can't explain it. Last year, year before, many, many years up to last week, if you had said, you will be picking a plaid with a gold thread running through it, I would have laughed. And that is the truth, I would have laughed. But this is like absolutely gorgeous to me this year, which, good, I'm glad I like it. Okay, and then I've got my napkins cut out. I haven't done any more work on those, but only because this is Monday. Um, I think today's the, is today the 21st? Yes, today is the 21st of September, 2020. Alrighty, so as you can imagine, I've been quite anxious to start on this. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I plan to use the floss that was provided. I'm not 100% sure what the blue floss is for, so I thought we would go through that together. It might be construction related. Uh, I, I just, I'm not, because I'm not seeing it here. I'm thinking it might be here. This is potentially so this is construction for stitching this little bag pouch together. This is most likely what is used in the handle attachment. So I'm going to skip ahead. <clears throat> they show this open if I am not mistaken so then you would just hold it within the this part of the frame that's like a trench I don't know how what else to say 
right here you would just push this into that and then go in and out and in and out through these on the front they don't go all the way through to the back okay well we're gonna have some fun but in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, dandelion embroidery I am absolutely amazed at how lovely this floss is how it feels we'll see if it holds up and if it continues to uh, you know enchant me to this level I don't know I'm pretty picky when it comes to floss I'm going to use the milliner needle which is the the longer of the three that they supplied now they do say for two strands to use one strand and double it over and tie a knot when I'm doing a French knot I want a lot of floss like I've got here I also prefer let me get you guys where I ow I just stabbed myself in the thumb with this silly needle okay great okay so we'll pick a French knot how about this one right here I don't know if you can see right there so what I plan to do is leave a small tail like so I'm gonna hold it down with my left hand like so and I'm going to take a stitch on the front within the area where the French knot is supposed to be okay and then on the back I'm gonna cross over this with my floss so I'm gonna go right over it and then I'm going to look for the spot on the front that correlates with that so I'm going to make a teeny tiny little tiny tiny cross right over that now if I want to I can't pull this out so I can remove this tail which is what I do just gonna snip it off and it is done so I don't have to tie a waist knot I don't have to cut a waist knot I'm I'm good all right so now I'm going to I think I'll make a four knot I mean a four twist French knot one two three four I'm going to hold it back with this finger oh, I wish I could fix this where you guys could see me okay one two three four All right I'm going to hold it back with this finger and I'm going to go right next to where I came up from the back side of the fabric pull and I'm going to use my left hand to manipulate these long tails. I'm not used to working with a really teeny tiny fr uh, frame, but there's my French knot. And that is how I will proceed until I run out of uh, this floss right here. So I'm just going to keep moving. As you can see, there's a, there's a lot of little French knots, which I figured there would be. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll show you what it looks like when I come back. Okay, guys, I'm going to try using... A larger hoop this one is too small I mean 
If I have to use it, I will, but I'm, I'm not, it's just not work, it's not doing it for me. Now you will be, unless you cut this away, you will be stitching through this. All right, so now I can just continue stitching and I have a, a bigger hoop to hang on to. Um, this was not that hard to do but it wasn't um, it wasn't I didn't find it as enjoyable because of the fiddly hoop that kept falling out of my hands so I will continue stitching okay so I'm stitching along and I wanted to point out a couple of things so first of all absolutely use a single strand and double it over Try, trying to use two strands, it's too long, it's too gangly, and making these French knots is, it's too difficult with, you know, a piece of floss that is this length. It's like super long. See, in fact, it might be 44 inches long. But if you double it over, you're still getting, you know, that value. You're still getting two strands and um, works a lot better. And on the back, you know, you can just kind of tie in like so without actually having to tie a knot. So I just, I'm sliding underneath pre, you know, pre-existing stitches here. Um, and then I'll, okay, and then I'm going to trim the little tails off like that and you know do be careful you don't want to get careless okay so I'm basically halfway I've done the top half um, so ba the, the basic anatomy of a French knot if you're not familiar is you bring your needle up through your fabric your, th your threaded needle Okay, and then it's best to use a long needle, like a milliner needle, or milliner, however you choose to say that. All right, and hold that the way you would normally hold it if you were stitching, say, a running stitch. Okay, you've pulled it through. Now, we're going to take this needle and this thread over here and wrap one. So, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Let me see if I can fix it so that you can. Maybe. So here's this. Now we're going to wrap it one, two, three. We're going to go back into, I'm holding tension on this over here, right here. We're going to go back beside where we pop the needle through coming up. I haven't let go of this right here. I'm, I'm holding on to it. We're going to pull the needle through out from underneath your hoop. Then we're going to put tension on this thread over here. So we're just going to kind of allow that to happen and that's what you get. You get a little twisty knot. Now every single time you do that you're twisting your thread. So we're just going to go straight back and you'll see it's going to be a little bit wavy. One, two, three, hold it go back inside the fabric, pull it out from under the hoop, put some tension on the thread, 
and I'm pulling over here and putting tension here and then I'm going to let go and I have another French knot but this time I've done two stitches so this time I'm just going to pick this up and I'm going to let this needle relax that prevents a lot of the the knotting that you get k-n-o-t-t-i-n-g three if you can keep the twist out of the I keep saying thread out of the floss you know just work work with your floss so like every other stitch that I do I will hold my work up before I even push it back through I'm just going to let this hang freely and grab my floss one two three next to where I brought it out I'm putting tension on it up above on the right side and I'm pulling the needle from underneath like this for that knot okay that's one I'm gonna do one more so I just do two every time I'm just gonna do two French knots and then let it untwist I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can okay Now the closer, when you start using up your thread and you're having to get closer and closer and closer, it can get a little um, difficult to do. But if you take your time and keep all the twist out of your floss, you know, you can probably use almost all of the floss before you're going to have to cut your thread. But I'm getting so close to being done with this particular part. I did want to look at the photo and see if they use French knots in the center. No, not on this one. I don't see any French knots in the center there or there or there. Um, that could be interpretation. I might, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of thread there in the middle. So, I don't know. At the moment, I haven't really decided if that's what I want to do. Um, I also have to say, I feel like, I know, I know, I'm not doing it the way they suggest, but I just feel like those dandelions are kind of clunky. And if I only used one strand of floss in the middle part, like I might go ahead and do two for their stems, but this particular part to me, on a real dandelion, is a little bit more ethereal. You know, it has kind of a almost not there look. So let me show you what I'm talking about on the package. It just to me it looks a little thick. So my thoughts are to just do one strand in the center of each of these and then use, you know, the two. I'm I'm going to just I'm going to interpret this the way I want it to be. Um, stitched and it's not going to look like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just that's not the vision I have in my head of dandelions. So I will be doing mine differently and I encourage every single one of you, my dandelions, to be you.
if you wanted to do it, you know, in variegated um, green floss, absolutely. That's the most wonderful thing about stitching and crafting and sewing. You can do it however it appeals to you to do it. All right, so I've done all of the French knots on this um, dandelion. So I'm going to tie off on the back. Just tie it off. I don't need to knot it. It will be fine. All right. And as I said, I, th I feel very strongly that for my personal um, embroidery project, I like the way it looks with the drawn on lines. So I feel like one strand of this floss would be plenty. Look there. Look at that. It's just this beautiful little pop of white that look, they, they just look like a, um, these are also Mill Hill, by the way. They're just not in their little container. They're, they're free roaming around in the drawer over there. I'll hold it up maybe where you can see. See how pretty that would be? I'm probably going to use them. Today is bread baking day. I just took all of the bread out of the oven. So that always takes a little bit of time. But so here are the Mill Hill glass seed beads. Those are quite pretty. There, I'll try to hold it still. They are pink and they are frosted. And evidently back in Time, sometime many, many, many years ago, because this would have been 20, maybe 22 years ago, these were 99 cents at Michael's. They are now no longer 99 cents at Michael's. Okay, so these are the, the blue think. I don't think I'm going to put them on there, but you know, seriously, if you wanted a little beaded purse with dandelions and beads, that would be a way to mega embellish this little project. Um, something to think about. Uh, if I if I purchase another one, you know. Um, like, my mind has really been um, going nuts thinking about um, Christmas and Christmas decorations and mini, you know, M-I-N-I -I things, little bitties. Um, you know, you could, not these in particular, but, I mean, that's cute. Um, but you could do, you know, any number of these little projects. Um for Christmas. Look how cute. They're adorable. Okay, so I chose to do, you know, the single um, strand of embroidery floss, and then I did a 10 wrap uh, bullion rose, or, or not bullion rose, French knot right in the middle. And now I am going to tie off right here. I just did that French knot and 
basically it was just instead of doing three wraps I wrapped uh, around this needle ten times and by the way this needle I didn't mention it before um, but I should have this needle is bent and this is how it arrived in packaging I don't know if you can tell I know you won't be able to see that let me find something like this maybe Ooh, I still don't know I'll try to hold it I'm not sure if anything I'm doing is even remotely helping <laughs> I don't think so but it curves like just ever so slightly and I can feel it ah here maybe that will help if I hold it like that you can see yeah it's maybe I don't know anyway that's how it arrived it's not bent so terribly that I cannot use it it is the sharp that we would need to use to stitch the entire little purse together so I'm not going to use it for that I might use it for other things with this project but I don't want to be trying to stitch this to get lining and these pieces and all that I don't want to be doing it with a bent needle so I'm going to put it back in the little bag oh well look at there I think you can see it I think you can see how bent it is. Yeah, that, that might help somewhat. I don't know. In any case, um, I'm going to use the only needle I haven't used yet, which is the Cruel, and it is not bent. So, the next... Uh, Okay, so the next step on this dandelion is the two strand um, stem. So I'm going to grab a piece of the white floss. Alright guys, so today as a recap we talked about the red work table runner that I'm working on. We discussed this project and I started on it, which I will continue to work on it. I also wanted to kind of help you remember that I also have this pattern and I want to try to do this table runner or a variation of that table runner. I think it may be too long for my table, so I may end up having to one, two, three, four, maybe do four. Um, not because my table wouldn't accommodate that, it surely would. It's just I don't think I want a table runner that would be that long on my table. I generally prefer about 25 inches. Um, and that is clearly way longer than 25 inches. So, I have that. And then I have Autumn Spice, which um, I think it's just absolutely fabulous fabric. The fun thing about it is it is 100% woven. Um, this is not a print. It is a woven fabric. And then I have Autumn Haze. And Autumn Haze is a series of prints that was also sold us a um, charm pack, 40 piece charm pack. No, this is Autumn Haze. I get these two mixed up all the time. To me, the other one is more of a haze, and this one is more of a spice. I don't, I don't know what to say. That's just what it is. 
All right. All right. So um, we'll come back. We'll work on these other projects some more. I'll probably be doing some embroidery in the morning before I see you guys. And I hope that you have a wonderful evening. Um, I hope tomorrow, Tuesday, September the 22nd is a wonderful day for you. And um, we'll get some more work done. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.